Hey everybody, it's uh, Brian with Engadget. I'm here with Richard yeah. Live Engadget. Yep. And of course, uh, Stephen Neal up in the middle. Hey, good to see you guys. Yeah, thanks for being here for, uh, with My us. My pleasure. Who, uh, the minute you came into the room, were, you, were, you were ready to show off your really cool toy. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Very cool device. Very cool device. <laughs> um, well, I, I was going to ask you, because you know, we've got this little evolution of Nokia devices here. And it, yes. it seems like you guys have been focused on optics for a long time. And I'm wondering at what point Nokia decided that this was really going to be kind of a focus, if not the focus for the company? No, it's, it's a really great question because to deliver something like, like the Lumion uh, 1020, which has fundamentally set a new chapter in smartphone imaging, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in a moment, but in order to get here, that's years in the making. And just as you've laid out here on the table, you know, the N8 with the, with the large sensor, of important step. Then the 808 that has a 41 megapixel sensor, first generation sensor, first generation software. And then of course, with our most recent Lumia devices, the exploration and, and really good work around optical image stabilization. So as my hand shakes, the lens is moving against that to give you a steady image. All You can see elements of all of this landing in the mm -hmm. Lumia 1020. And so while you know something like this is years in the making, it takes vision many years ago to actually say this will be important. And the way we decide that it's important is by having the conversations with people. What are they trying to do with these devices? And of course, one of the common things you hear with many of the other smartphones out there is, yeah, I go to the concert, I hold up the device, I try and take a video or an image, and it's blurry, you know, you can't see anything, the audio is distorted. All of those types of issues are what we set out to address. With the so what, 1020. what were the main challenges? Because obviously, uh, you know, uh, phones don't grow out uh, on a tree, you know. But um, what were the main challenges from going from the Symbian version to your Windows Phone version? Because uh, a lot of people would think, oh gosh, it's taken so long, you know. Yes. And this is something that we've been begging for yes. from Nokia, you know. Yes. A lot of people have been asking for this capability, and the challenges there were several. One is creating this next generation sensor, which is backside illuminated, to get that level of sensitive pixels for better low light performance and to be able to do oversampling with it was really, really hard engineering work. But then to take this large sensor and to create a new stabilization mechanism with ball bearings and small magnetic motors that actually move this around, that was hard engineering work. But the real challenge is all of the software and algorithmic work that goes into this. So whether it is the fact that I can discover one image, and as, as we showed, showed you guys before, I took this image just when I walked mm -hmm. into the room. Horrible, horrible Horrible face. image, You're just yeah. obviously just off a plane, or maybe a couple of planes from the look of it. Yeah, but <laughs> I can zoom back mm -hmm. out, and being able to zoom way, 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 way in, I don't want to look at And it. make that the image. Yeah. All of those capabilities, that's about software mm -hmm. and good algorithmic control. And of course, we demonstrated great low light capability, manual focus capabilities. We demonstrated the effects of the Xenon flash compared to our competitors. So much of that work is actually in the software. So that's where some of the hardest challenges have been. The, the idea is, is reframing. That was that was mentioned a lot. So you know, obviously, you've got your phone on you. You've got to take a really quick image. You don't necessarily know where to point it. Exactly, and that's the point. Yeah. Is you know, I can be in a situation where I say, okay, I want to take a new image. It's somewhere over here. Let me just capture it. Okay, I've got the image, and I've got it. But I can decide: Do I want this image, mm -hmm. which captured like this? Do I want this to be like that, or do I actually want to make it a study in? what looks like a wedding ring. Now, my mm -hmm. you'll notice my focal point was on the camera and not further back, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, I can make that image into many different things. And this is the point. It changes how you do photography because now it's not about, you know, frame it, get it just right. You can do all that later. Capture the pixels, capture the image, and then work with it subsequently. Very cool stuff. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you, and I think somebody kind of touched on this a little bit during the Q&A, but I'm wondering if, you know, if, if, if a company is so focused on that specifically, um, is it possible that the, that the phone suffers elsewhere, you know, that, that maybe you're not putting as much focus into other aspects of the hardware? Well, when you look at what we've delivered with this device, or, you know, for example, the 925, what you see is obviously a huge amount of work that goes into things like the industrial design, the look, the feel, the fact that this is an inherent color. That's real engineering as well, the support for wireless charging. The fact that this screen can be seen in direct sunlight, the fact that I can control it when I have a glove on, 
all of these capabilities, here maps, here drawing for navigation purposes, we're investing in a deliberate set of differentiators all on top of the Windows Phone platform. So you put all of those pieces together and you have a very competitive smartphone. Now in the space of a 30 minute press conference, sure. clearly we're going to spend a lot of time sure. on the, the most distinctive element of that. But we did try and make the point that it also satisfies all of those other needs as well. But are you not worried that, because like, it wasn't that long ago when the 925 and the 928 uh, just came out, you're not worried that the, this new phone will cannibalize uh, your more other recent phones? Well, there's always the, the requirement that different consumers have different needs at different price points. Mm -hmm. And so we deliberately prepare a portfolio. But what you're seeing is you know, experience we gain in certain technologies or experiences ripple all the way through the portfolio. So here, the most advanced form of image stabilization as one example. Different example of it here. Mm -hmm. In some of the lower price devices, it might be done not with mechanical, but just with a digital effect. Mm -hmm. So these same things we learn, we apply up and down the portfolio to create an experience at different price points that are suitable for different people in different markets. Well, while we're talking about lower, lower price points, I mean that's obviously something that Nokia has been very successful in mm -hmm. in, in you know, developing nations, for example. Um, how long until we start seeing these technologies trickling into cheaper devices? So you're seeing some of that already today. So for example if you buy a, a Lumia 520, it has certain in software, not hardware, but software capabilities that allow you to create some of these effects. So the, the overall body of work that we do, we deliberately try to take elements of the hero experiences and filter them down. And you'll see us keep doing that. So you'll see some of this most advanced technology show up maybe in scale down or narrower forms on lower price point devices. So that's a, a constant element of, of what we're focused on. Hmm, okay, and I think uh, just one last question. Please. Um, since uh, I, I'm from China, so mm -hmm. I've got some China-specific questions. Um, we, we're now seeing a lot of uh, the, the so-called a thousand yuan phones, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's good to see you guys going um, increase, uh, increase, growing your portfolio, covering all the price points. Yes. Uh, but uh, I think. Uh, frankly speaking, we're still not seeing as many people holding a Nokia phone in China these days. So, um, what are you going to do about this? Um, you know, you, you said you've mentioned all the features trickling down, yeah. uh, but uh, have you got other uh, plans? That yeah, part of it is um, in a market like China. Um, the price point because of the way the operators are working and so forth. What you will see us continue to do is introduce products with more and more capability but pushing that price point down. Right. So when we first started with Lumia a couple of years ago, we were at the relatively high price points, but right now the volume of phones that we're selling in China around Lumia is increasing okay. as we push down the price points. And we just have to keep doing that and delivering great experiences across the whole range. China is a wonderfully diverse country, so you'll see you. a lot of these, but you'll see a large number of lower priced devices as well. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thanks very well, much. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's all the time we have, so thank, thanks for being here again. My pleasure. Okay. And again, changing the way we shoot, create, and share photographs. Very excited. Heard thank it you. here first. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.